Hello, I'm Ross Mould, AJ Bell's Investment Director, and in this latest edition of our regular markets review, Breaking the Mould, I'm going to look at drugs, betting and advertising. All of them are capable of causing a fuss in the week ahead, because on Wednesday the 24th of August, we've got interim results from three FTSE 100 firms, namely Hikma Pharmaceuticals, which is looking to bounce back from a profit warning issued earlier in the month, online and high street bookmaker Paddy Power Betfair, and finally, media and advertising giant WPP. So, let's get going with Hikma's first half figures. The company is a developer and distributor of tablet, capsule and injectable branded medicines with three parts of the business. Generics, injectables and branded products. Now, as I mentioned right at the start, the Jordanian firm uh, did cough up a profit warning on the 3rd of August. Management said that full year sales would meet forecasts of 2 to $2.1 billion at group level, but noted profits would be lower than expected, owing to delays in product launches and litigation at the generics arm. The unexpected problem seemed to lie with Roxanne Laboratories, a US-based generics business acquired back in February, and Broker Numis responded to the news by halving its profit forecast for the generics arm to around $36 million US dollars for the year. That hammered the 5.4 billion cap share price, as we can see here, even though sales at the injectables business are meeting expectations and margin are coming in higher than expected, while branding was coming in in line. Now, when it comes to the interims, therefore, do look at sales and margin guidance for all three units, and also watch for the number of new product approvals, where the last five full year figures are shown here. In addition, Hikma had built up a pretty good long-term track record of profit and dividend growth, as we can see. But there was a stumble in 2015, and now we've had another one. Chairman and Chief Executive Saeed Dawaza will therefore doubtless be looking to reassure that this is just a blip. There have, though, been other down years, 2008 and 2011 profit-wise, but Hikma did then quickly get back on track. Growth investors will want to see a repeat, a bounce back. Forward price earnings ratios of 27 times for 2016 and 19 for 2017. Well, they could look a bit toppy otherwise, and despite the Divi growth record, income hunters are unlikely to be too excited by a yield of barely 1%. On the same day as Hikma, we have interims from Bookie Paddy Power Betfair, the company being a result of a merger in February. Weighed down by tax charges, new regulations, and the challenge posed by online, there's been a wave of consolidation in the whole bookmaking industry. 888 and Rank are bidding for William Hill, and Ladbrokes is looking to merge with Gala. But Paddy Power Betfair is one of the disruptors, unlike the disrupted Hills and Ladbrokes, who have struggled to get online right. Despite that, Paddy Power Betfair shares haven't made vast amounts of headway over the past year, although they did have a stunning run before that, thanks to industry-wide concerns and some scepticism over the merits of the merger. Now, this is the first year of the company's existence, so analysts are still slightly feeling their way with the numbers, but the May 1st quarter trading update gave us a feel of what the three key numbers could be when it comes to the interims on Wednesday the 24th. Sales were up 16% at the Q1 stage, with online, Australia, the US and retail all up, while operating profit rose 36% despite a rotten Cheltenham festival. And since then, the football results have gone the bookies' way, especially at the Euros. And then finally, boss Brayon Corcoran reaffirmed the firm is on track to achieve £50 million of integration savings a year. So latch on to those figures. Also watch for the dividend, as Paddy Power as a standalone business had increased the payout every year for at least a decade. Now last and by no means least, we come to WPP, one of the world's largest advertising and public relations agencies. Its share price for the last 12 months is shown here, and it doesn't look too bad. Boss Sir Martin Sorrell may not be everybody's cup of tea, and his pay packet's a frequent source of controversy, but his commentary on the industry outlook is always worth a read. His June piece referred to a low growth, low inflation world where his clients were focusing on costs to grow profits rather than investment owing to a lack of pricing power, with geopolitical uncertainty and the price crushing powers of the internet thrown in. Although Sir Martin did reference the Rio Olympics, European football and November's US election as potential positives for advertising spend. As for the numbers, June's AGM trading update gives us a yardstick. Like for like net sales are up 3.1%, with both sales and profit above budget for the year, after just four months I should say. For the full year, the consensus analyst forecast is for earnings per share growth of 12%, helped by acquisitions, and a 20% bump up in the dividend to 53.3p. So let's see how the interims look, and whether Sir Martin talks at all about Brexit. 
So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.